Hey guys, quick heads up before I start the video, the link down below takes you to my Patreon where you can download the project files for this video. Also gain access to my premium tutorials and in-depth courses where we build games together from start to finish. Check out my Patreon below, gain direct access to years of experience so that you can start working on your dream game tomorrow. Hello everybody and welcome back to a new episode of my multiplayer Bean Battle Royale series. So in the last episode we set up uh, our island to actually have water around it. So we now have like this ocean material here and then the island has complete water around it. And then we also set up this other island here which is basically the pre-match island, the spawning island. So when you take a look at PUBG, players typically spawn here. Now, once a certain amount of players have been met, then they will get a countdown after which the plane will spawn in and then the plane will basically fly over the main island where you then drop out and play the game. So that's what we did in last episode. In this episode, we will be setting up Steam. So I've been seeing a lot of comments asking me, will you also do the series using Steam? And the answer is yes, why not? So in this episode, we are going to be replacing the default session node, so the default online subsystem with the Steam online subsystem. So let's go ahead and get right started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close our project. And then I want you guys to locate the project folder. And then when we take a look inside of the project folder, we can clean a couple things up. So first of all, the derived and intermediate data folders, these uh, get created every time that you start the game again. So this one we can delete. And then we see the saved folder also. And inside of the saved folder, we have the config folder. Now the config folder basically contains all of your editor settings. So if you got preferred settings uh, inside of the editor, such as uh, other comment colors or whatever, then you can keep the config files but the others you can simply delete them since they get recreated every time that you start your project so for me i'm also going to actually delete the saved folder so now that we clean up the project a little bit then it's time for us to actually start to set the project up with steam so uh, for that well first of all there are a lot of plugins available on the marketplace that expose the whole steamworks api to blueprints but there's also a very famous free one which the community made which is called the advanced sessions plugin now what this plugin does is it gives you additional notes with which you can replace the create session and the finding of sessions with the uh, create advanced session and the find advanced session nodes and what those do is that they allow you to play your game over the steam network so if we take a look here at steam then we saw in a previous video that steam is basically our system to get our game online otherwise we would have to expose our uh, local ip address and get people actually connected to your home network so in order to fix that, we are going to be installing Steam so that you can actually play over the internet together with your friends. So um, first things that we have to do is that if you take a look at the Unreal Engine documentation, then we get to a category called programming and scripting. And in that category, if you scroll down, we see online subsystems. And we talked about that in a previous episode for this series. And then we see the online subsystem Steam. So as it says here as well, an overview of online subsystem Steam, including how to set up your project for distribution on false Steam platform. So keep in mind when using the online subsystem Steam, it is intended that you actually release your game on Steam. If you are not planning on releasing your game on Steam, then you can keep your default subsystem and then you can either set up dedicated servers or use something like EOS, so Epic Online Services, which is uh, actually cross-platform. But when working with Steam, then most of you actually want to use like achievements. You want to use uh, perhaps the leaderboards for Steam uh, and also you've got, of course, your Steam friends. So that's why we are looking at setting up Steam for this video. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to scroll all the way down to where we read something about uh, the finished settings. So this is the end result. And what we see here is that we need to configure our default engine any file to now be set up that we no longer use the default platform, but that the default platform is now Steam. So we're going to be changing the default online subsystem to the Steam subsystem. So what we got to do is we got to select all of this code hit control copy then inside of your project folder we're going to go over to the config folder and here we see the default engine any file if we double click that then it gives us this text file uh, and there's a lot of uh, settings in here so these are all your project settings but what we need to do is simply scroll all the way down 
do a couple of enters here and then paste that code in here. Then hit control save to save it. And there you go. Now what we see here is that we have online subsystem steam enabled true. And then we see that we have a steam dev app ID of 480 here. Now, if we take a look at the website of the our engine documentation, then we see here what a steam app ID is. So all games using the steam online subsystem must have a valid application ID because the steamworks API won't initialize if you don't know your application's Steam app ID. So you get one when you purchase a license for Steam. A license for Steam is 100 bucks, and that's the only lifetime fee. And at that point, you can just simply release your game on Steam. Now, when testing, Steam provides a, a testing ID called 480. And when you use the 480 ID, then we uh, have to package the game as a development mode. So you can package your game both in shipping and development. So when using the testing ID, package your game as a development mode, and then you can test it with your friends. But there are some limitations, so you can test it with your friends, but they have to be from the same country. So we will get into testing a little bit later, but first let us now actually download the plugin and set that up. So um, to download the plugin, we're gonna go over to the Unreal Engine forums and then the advanced session plugin uh, link here. I'll put it down in the description of this video. And then if we scroll down, then we see here that we got a link to the GitHub. So we can either download the plugin from GitHub. Now to download the correct version, you can click here on master. And if you scroll down, you see all the different versions. So on GitHub, we see that their latest version is 5.0. So for those of you that have a later version and they haven't got it here on GitHub yet, you can also click uh, this link down here. So if you click that link, then it will take you to their website. And then here we see that there's a couple of other versions of so 5.3.1, 5.2.1, etc. So download the version that you uh, are going to need. The version that I am using for this whole tutorial series is 5.0.3. So I'm gonna click that one and it takes me over here. So here we can simply click on download and then click on download anyways. Now that this is downloaded, we can open it up and drag this onto our desktop. There we go. Now that we drag that on our desktop, the example blueprint, we don't need that. So we can go ahead and delete that. And this is then the folder for the advanced sessions. So next up, we need to put that plugin into our project. So to do that, we open up our project and we right click here and then we go ahead to new and create a new folder and we got to call that plugins. Now that we got that plugins folder, we open it up and we also open up the advanced session folder and we can simply drag these two into here. There we go. Once we did that, we can then go ahead and open up the project. Check out Cactus Center right now on Steam and Early Access. It's a very fun multiplayer video game, cheaper than a Starbucks coffee. So if you want to have a good time with your friends or strangers, click that link down below. And I appreciate every single one of you and enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. There we go. So when then opening up the project, we see that the project detects that there are new plugins available. So we're gonna click on manage plugins. And then over here, we see the advanced session plugins. We see that they're both enabled. If they're not enabled for you by default, then make sure to enable them and then restart the editor. Then next up, we're gonna go over to our widgets folder and then our main menu folder sessions and then the create game widget. So first of all, we're gonna be replacing the uh, default subsystem create session node with now the new advanced create session node. So if we right click, we can now type in create session. And then we see that we got this additional create advanced session one. So if we click that one, we see that it gives us way more options than what the previous node gives us. So now we're gonna have to replace this one. So remove this guy and then hook up the new one. The new one also asks for a player controller. It also asks for a public connection amount, which is gonna be our max players. We can plug in whether or not we wanna use LAN. And then we do see a couple of other options here as well. So you can go ahead and give yourself more options here. There's also, uh, for example, a nice one is that we have shoot advertise. So that means whether or not you want your server to be hidden or public so that other people can join. 
And then there's a couple of extra options. If you want to know what these options are, you can go ahead and read the Steamworks API documentation on Steam, and it will, ex uh, it will explain in perfect detail to you what all of these settings are. What we also get here is extra settings. And what this allows us is to share way more than just what the previous notes uh, gave us, such as setting a server name, the ping, the current players, uh, and yeah, that was basically it. So that was what the old session stuff gave us. The new session stuff gives us extra settings. So we can actually type in make, and then we can make these settings. So if we then go over here, then we can see that we can make settings such as a float. So we could then say, for example, that we are in a specific game mode. And then oh, instead of a float, <laughs> we of course would need something like a string for this. A string so we could say that we are in a specific game mode and then we could say we are in the game mode three four all and then when we uh, input settings like these then players can also find these types of settings and basically display that inside of the server browser or we can specifically start to search for uh, game modes that are equal to the to these values of free for all so with the advanced uh, session nodes we can have extra settings that we want to display inside of our server browser. But now for setting it up, we're just gonna continue. So off of success, we're gonna be opening the, no, uh, the level here again, and that's basically it. So then hit compile and save. Now this blueprint is done. Then the next one that we need to replace is the server browser. So if we open up our server browser, go over to the graph, then here we see the previous old find session node. So yet again, we're gonna type in find sessions and then here we see find sessions advanced that's the one that we need then we are going to disconnect this one and hook this one up so we want to hook up the player controller the max result is how many sessions we want to find so something like 50 is nice whether or not we want to use lan and then here off of the uh, success we want to hook up the results here again so this one is still the blueprint session result structure, which is still the same that we were previously using. Now we can go ahead and hit compile and save. So like I just said, we could make extra settings and then we can also find games based on those extra settings. So over here, we got the filter. And then if we are to type in make, so here you can then drag off. And then over here, if we open this up, you can make a literal session search property. And then the search property that we would plug in here, would basically be uh, something of the type string for example so here we could then type in that key again and then type in the free or all again and then we can say uh, we want to filter on uh, on the game mode free for all uh, and something that is equal to free for all now we can also do multiple so we can say free for all in a specific map and that's the new type of data that we can now start to share in these sessions so for the sessions here we're going to hook up the on failure to this one and there we go so that's what this node is then we hit compile and save and that's all for this then next up, we need to convert our project to be a hybrid project. So we basically need to add a C++ class to the project so that this is now a blueprint and a C++ project. We need to do this for the plugin to properly work. So how do we do that? We go all the way up here to tools and then we see new C++ class. If we hit that, then we do not want to touch anything here. So we're just going to click on next and then it will create a C++ class for our bean battle royale. Uh, and the name is perfectly fine. So yet again, we're just gonna hit create class. And then it tells us project now includes sources. Please close the editor and build from your IDE. So what that means in short is now you can open up Visual Studio and rebuild the project there. So we'll be doing that now. So click okay. And then next it tells you successfully added my class. Would you like to edit the code now? Uh, what we need to click here is no. So we don't wanna edit the code now uh, because when editing that code and building the project inside of Visual Studio, we need to make sure that the project is actually closed. So what we're gonna do now is hit save all and close our project. And then if we take a look at our folder for the project, then we can now see that we got the SLN file. So we got the Visual Studio file in here. So uh, what we're gonna do then is that we're gonna double click the Visual Studio file, which would open up Visual Studio. Now I am using Visual Studio 2019. You might be using a later version, 
and that's all good. Just make sure that you got all the correct C++ components and .NET components installed. If you don't have these components installed, then Unreal will tell you that, or Visual Studio itself will tell you that in the errors, and then simply follow the instruction in the errors. So uh, then what we have to do here is that we see that our project has loaded up, and then if we click here on develop, make sure that you click on development editor and that it is set to windows 64 next up select your project and then right click it here and i click on build now that typically that goes very fast so let's wait till that's finished this usually takes around a minute or so so it shouldn't take too long and there we go uh, so after a minute or so we see that it says build one succeeded zero failed zero up to date zero skipped so that means that it correctly uh, built the project here so now if we go ahead and hit close then our project has now successfully installed the plugin now we can go ahead and test it so let's go ahead and make sure that steam is running yet again and then we will start the bean battery project all right so now a couple things to note. So how can we now test if it works? Well, testing Steam can only be done in standalone. So if you st if you start your games here in the editors, then Steam will not work. It only works in standalone games. So to test in standalone, we can also simply open up the project, right click and hit launch game here. That also launches your game in standalone. And, and then we're gonna be looking in the bottom right corner here to see if Steam pops up. Now, if it does, so there we go, then it is correctly installed and correctly set up. So now that we see that Steam pops up and has been initialized, then what we can also test is to do shift top at the same time, which gives us the Steam overlay. Uh, and when this all works, it means that Steam basically works fine. So uh, then what we see is that we are playing a game called Space War. So it will say that you're playing Space War as long as you are using that development ID of 480. And when testing with the development ID of 480, then you can only test with people that are from the same region or country as you. So if you are from the Netherlands, you can only test with people that are also from the Netherlands. So that region block, it will get removed once you get your own game app ID. So um, if you buy a hundred bucks ticket for making a Steam game, install that app ID inside of that config ini file, then you can start to play uh, with friends from all different countries. So now we can just simply hit create and then click in five players, create. And this is now a session that is running on Steam. So how can I test this locally? Well, if I got another laptop with another separate Steam account, then I can simply package my game as a .exe uh, in a development build. And then I can give my other laptop that packaged development build. And then if the other laptop is logged in with a Steam account, uh, that is different than the Steam account that I'm using on this computer, then I can also test it myself without having to test it with friends. So guys, that's it for this tutorial video. Now that we've set up Steam in the next video, we're gonna be continuing on the actual logic of the gameplay. So we might work on that airplane that's gonna fly over and spawn us on the island there, or we might actually be working on some user interface so that we get somewhat of a feel for like health bar uh, and that we can start looting and picking up items, etc. So we'll see what we do in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to check it out on Patreon if you want to get the project files with everything in it. I appreciate you guys. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. Have a good day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.